If you're like a lot of people, you've had your daily routines disrupted with having to change your routine, being told that your work's being closed or that you can't have face-to-face -face meetings, or, or you just have to change arrangements so that there can be some social distancing between people. And I just wanted to introduce you to Zoom as a piece of online software that can really help you use uh, online meetings as a way of replacing face-to-face -face meetings and do it really well. I'm Trudy Rankin from West Island Digital and I'm looking forward to showing you how to use Zoom. What you can see here on the screen is just uh, the zoom.us is the URL for it. This is their website and the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up an account with them. Now I've already logged in but what it will do for you it will say set up a free account. You can set up a free account or a paid account. If you set up a free account, just be aware that the meetings are limited to 45 minutes at a time. So you have to either be prepared to have the call terminate at 45 minutes, pretty much exactly, and then restart a meeting, either keep your meetings below 45 minutes, or just have a paid account. It's really not that expensive for a year's worth of Zoom, and it's very a very useful tool. So you can just decide what you want to do there, either manage your time or have a paid account. So once you've actually had an, got an account, you can download uh, the Zoom software onto your laptop, desktop, or mobile phone, and use that on whatever tool that you want. It'll also download onto tablets, uh, and so you can have your calls from wherever you want to, to have them from. You can also depending on how old your device is. If it doesn't have a camera, it is still possible to download Zoom because you can run your calls uh, without a video as long as you have good audio. So what I want to show you now is the actual icon itself. Once you've downloaded it, it's going to sit down at the bottom of your screen, uh, wherever you put it or however you have it in your computer. Mine's down at the bottom of my screen because I've got a Mac. Other people might have it sitting, sitting somewhere else. But you're basically just going to click on that to bring it up. And I'm going to click on the Home button there. This is the most important uh, part of the actual icon, the, the software. You can choose to start a new meeting just by clicking on this. You can choose to join a meeting. If somebody's already got a meeting started and you know what the, the, um, the meeting ID is, you can click there. You can schedule a meeting or you can use it to share your screen. If you want to schedule a meeting, you can click on that little um, icon, give it a name, a topic, so that everybody who knows w about the meeting knows what it's about. Put your dates in, your times, make sure the time zone is the correct one. You can either choose to generate a meeting ID automatically, so you get a different ID every time you schedule a meeting, or you can choose to use the same meeting ID every time. It's just up to you. You can also choose to have uh, make your meeting attendees have a password that they have to know before they can join your meeting. That can be useful if you don't want anybody accidentally stumbling onto your meeting. It's highly unlikely, but if you do use this personal meeting ID all the time, that can happen. It's happened to me before people will accidentally join the meeting um, before you're ready for them or just out of the blue. It can be a little bit awkward and embarrassing, so you can use a password. You can also choose to start your call with the video on or off for either yourself as the host or for the participants, so you make those settings just here. And you can also have a number of different choices for the audio. You can choose to use your phone or you, and your computer audio or just your phone or just your computer or you can have a different kind of audio source like, uh, for example, I'm using a microphone right now. Then you're going to also basically say which calendar you want to use to schedule the, the meeting and where you want that to sit. You can also click on advanced options here and you can basically just get a little bit more sophisticated about how the call goes. You can enable people to join before you as the host have actually started up um, if you're running a little bit late or whatever. You can also make sure that when participants do join their, um, their audio is turned off so that there's not a lot of sound uh, or uh, muddying up the waters when people are trying to talk. And you can also choose to record the meeting automatically. And when you do, you can either turn that on or off if you don't want to record uh, automatically. 
and because you can choose to re hit record later in the call or you can and you when you do record the meeting you can tell it whether you want it to sit on the file to sit on your computer or whether you want to re just let it sit in the cloud save it in the cloud and the last thing to know is, is that you can actually assign somebody as an alternative host and that can be a, a very useful and valuable thing to do because sometimes it's um, you may not be able to make it to a meeting and somebody else can be the host and just go ahead and kick the meeting off, get going and manage it as they go. So you would just put somebody's email address in there, send that through to them and or that would be sent through to them with the invite and then you just hit schedule and that will pop that into your you, it'll pop them into your calendar and at that point you can then add the other people that you want to invite to it and it sends them all of the details including the the meeting ID that they're going to need to be able to get into your call. So I'm just going to turn that off. What I want to do now is I want to show you what the tool itself looks like. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to come down to the icon and click on, well, turn that on and I'm just going to click new meeting and obviously the videos come on and it's showing my face and showing the rest of my study and I'm it's automatically recording because I have it set up to, to record like that if I didn't want it to do that I could turn it off or I could pause it if you have something sensitive you want to talk about you can always pause the recording before you um, keep going again now you can see here that the up here it says Zoom meeting ID. That's the meeting ID that was generated when I clicked on that orange icon to start the meeting. It, this little bit here tells you how long the meeting's been going for. And you can also click on that to make it enter full screen. So I'm just going to do that right now. Make it enter full screen. It brings it up. It makes it a lot bigger. Makes it a lot easier to see, especially if you're going to share your screen. And I'll show you what that's like in a minute. Now, down in the lower left-hand side here, you've also got little tools that are going to help you manage yourself as host. Now if you need to you can click here to mute the audio and then if you turn it unmute yourself then you can uh, hear what people are saying. You can also stop the video. If I click the video it takes the video away and just shows my name. If I turn it back on it shows me again turns the camera back on. Now you can also, during a meeting, you can also invite other people by clicking on that. It just basically, it just tells you choose from a, lip, uh, a list or you can click on an email, send it through an email to invite people to your meeting. The other thing you can do is, is that you can manage participants and that can be really important if you've got people who are have got background noise um, or for some reason something's happening and you need to just manage that interaction and if you basically you, you they got it will have everybody's name it tells says who's the host at the moment I'm the host and it's not showing anybody else because nobody else is on the call but you can also click on mute and that's going to shut the sound off and then when they're ready to speak you can unmute them or they can unmute themselves or you can rename the person so that it is clear to people who on the rest of the people on the call who that person is um, and there's there's a few other little bits and pieces you can do for instance you can kick somebody off of a call just be aware that if you do that they won't be able to rejoin the call for example I had an instance once where somebody was having uh, technical troubles and I didn't realize that if you kicked them off the call they couldn't get back on so rather than fixing the problem it made it 10 times worse so just be aware that you if you kick somebody off you actually have to go into your own settings on zoom as the website zoom uh, and and basically change some settings and and even then they still won't be able to come back in on the same call that you were on so just be wary of that the next thing that you can do is share your screen so I'm just going to quickly share my screen and show you do that how to do that this is this little green box here at the bottom with the arrow in it click on that then you get to choose what you want people to see if they if, if you're sharing your screen if I was to choose desktop it would show you basically what you're seeing already um, or I could show them uh, the the website if I was to show them that show you that then you're going to see um, the, the Zoom website or whichever website you choose to use. If you want to get out of that, you go back up here to the top, you can see that there are still 
your your control bar it goes up to the top and it's got a green bit with the ID on there and then stop share red bit stop share so click on stop share and it brings you back to the screen I'm going to click back again on entering full screen and then I'm going to go down here and just show you what this does this is advanced sharing options and this basically says who can share whether you just want yourself as host to be able to share what's on your screen or whether you want participants to be able to share as well so you can set that there the next thing is chat if you click on the chat button you basically have the ability to type chat messages to people you can either send them to everyone who's on the call or you can choose to there will be in your call because you'll have more than one person on it there'll be a little drop down arrow just here you can click on that and choose people one at a time or groups uh, to, to be able to type a message in there and just send a message to specific people you have to be careful if you do that because you if you forget to change this little box back to everyone once you've done that then it's going to uh, send a lot of private messages and you're not going to realize that that's the case you can also click on the file and you can add a file to the chat or you can click on the three little buttons and set some more rules here about how you want the chat to operate so that's the chat function also down at the bottom here you can choose stop to pause recording or you can choose to stop recording while still continuing the call the other thing that you can do is, is that if you have um, someone there you can assign somebody to type in captions and or you can use a captioning service and that typically would only be used if you had people with accessibility issues that needed to be able to see captions uh, but it is a useful tool to use if, if it's necessary the other thing you can do is, is that you can assign somebody to support you whilst you're taking responsibility for running the meeting you can have somebody there to support you technically now this sign says no one is available to support you are the only participant in the meeting obviously that's the case but if you have more than one meeting you could have assigned somebody to support you that is a very quick overview of what you can do with zoom if you can also if you're going to be using zoom a lot you can also go back to the zoom website the zoom.us website and you can choose to set a whole bunch of settings so that you don't have to worry about messing around with them while you're on the call facilitating the call it can help if you do that ahead of time and think about how you want to use it but you're probably going to want to play with zoom for a little while before you go back and do some of the back-end settings it's not difficult to do sometimes it can be a little bit tricky figuring out which bits to to tick in order to do turn bits on and off but you can just use it exactly the way it is right now it's very usable it's very user friendly it's pretty easy to figure out and I love this tool I use it a lot we use it a lot in in the program that we run but I just wanted you to be able to get started with it quickly so that you can use it to replace any face-to-face -face meetings that you have and especially if you're not familiar with using online tools like zoom if you have any questions about zoom or other questions that you might have about how to help move your business online and and just move components of it more online than they already are please feel free to send me an email at t rankin t r a n k i n at west islanddigital.com west island digital is all one word and i will do my best to get back to you and and just give you some hints and tips on how you can basically move your business more online or or if it's not a business if you have any questions about using online technology more happy to try and help all the best and take care <laughs>